In this video, I want to show you how you can set default values to a combo box, not just a regular combo box. I want to take it to the next level, and I want to show you how you can set the default for a combo box that is part of a form, and that form is actually connected to a Dataverse table with a lookup field. Let's see how we can do that. Before we start, let's have a quick review on the setup. Inside Power Platform, I created a solution that is called Default Lookup Value that has two tables only. One of them is Product Category, which is the list of the categories that are available for the products that we want to add to the other table. And that other table has the product name, unit price, units in the stock. And the last one is YouTube category, which I got it from the product category. So every item that you see under YouTube category is one item from the product category that is the other table. Although I'm trying to make the videos on YouTube in a way that everybody can easily understand that, right in the beginning, I want to have a quick note for the experienced developers so that they can watch maybe a minute of this video, they get the point, and they leave us alone so that we can comfortably sit there and have our chit chat. So experienced developers, here's your one minute. Power Apps Combo Box has two properties. One of them is items, that this items property can accept a table, array, or collection. So basically, these are the items that the combo box are going to display as the choices that the user can pick. At the same time, Power Apps Combo Box has another property called default selected items. Remember this table? Whatever that's going to be the default value, just filter this guy and stick it in here. That's it. Every time that you reset that combo box, it's going to show the filtered items as the default value. Now that you got your point, leave us alone because now I want to get back to basics. So this is the solution that I created, which is called default lookup value. And inside it, I have the product category and the YouTube product. I create a new app quickly, Canvas app, and I call it YouTube product management, and I click on create. And here I want to create a screen. I call it SCR underscore products list. And here I want to show the products that I have in that table. So I quickly make a connection to this table that shows the products. So I click on add data and I call it YouTube products. There we go. And I add the data table here. So data table. And I pick the YouTube products from here and it shows me only the product name and the created on. I need to readjust it a little bit. I don't need the created on, remove. And I just add a few more fields. The fields that I need are category, which is my YouTube category, add. I want to add another field, which is unit price and the unit in the stock. So unit price, unit in stock, and I just add them. Now, the YouTube category shows you a weird value, which is not what you're looking for. Just look it up because it's a lookup field. It says, hey, probably they need to see the ID. We say, no, we don't want the ID. We just replace this ID by name. So now it looks the category properly, which is not a big deal. Our challenge starts when we want to add another screen here. Let me say adding a new screen, and I want to call this a screen SCR add new product. And in this new product, I can use the edit form, insert, click on this guy, forms, edit form. And because I want to use this edit form to add new product, the default mode is going to be new. The data source, I want to pick it up from the YouTube products. You know I hate forms with three columns. I pick one column. I don't need this created on. Let me get rid of it. And the fields that I want to add here are the same fields 
as of YouTube category. The other fields that I want to add are going to be unit, price, and units in stock. And I click on Add. OK. At the moment, if I just run this guy, I have a drop down that shows me the list of products. I can pick one of them or the other one, and it's all good. And if I want to add this, let me just let me add a button here. I go to icons and I just pick the save button. Bingo. Let me just add this one here, increase the size a little bit. ICO underscore save. And on select, I want to tell this guy submit form. And the form that I have is form one. And right after that, I want to say navigate. And it's going to be to the product list. And you all know I like fade. I close this guy and I just expand this so you can see what's going on here. So I submit the form and then I navigate to the list of products. Let's test it quickly and see if it works. I say my test product from app. Let the category be arts equipment. Unit price is going to be, for example, 10 units in the stock. We have, for example, 20 and I click on save. And you see that the product, my test product from app is added here. So we are all good. Maybe you want to add another button here. Let's say icon plus to add. And this add is not going to do anything but going to the other screen. So on select, let's say navigate to SCR add new product, and again, fade, and I close this guy, you're good. So let me just save it quickly. I don't want to share it with anyone, and we're good. So now our app works this way. If I click on this plus, it takes me to this new screen. This form needs to be reset when we come to this screen. So let me just pick this screen quickly, and on visible, I would say, Reset form, and that's going to be form one. There we go. So this time, when I go back to my product list and I run this, I click on this guy, it shows me a fresh form. The only thing that we need to do now, instead of blank category, we want to pick, for example, food for the category. And this is where our work starts. Now, first of all, let's see the items in this guy. So let's say, Pick the combo box. I click on advanced and I unlock it. And here you see it shows you the choices of YouTube products dot YouTube category. What does that mean? In Power Apps, we have a function called choices. Choices is a function that returns a table or an array. It takes a table. It takes the column name. As long as that column is lookup or choice, the choices returns a list of everything that can be selected for that specific column. If I ask choices to go to the YouTube product dot YouTube category, it says, OK, what are all the possible options that I can pick for the YouTube category? And it immediately gives me a list of all these items from the product category. Let's give it a shot and see what is exactly inside it. To do that, I add another dummy screen here. I don't want to rename it. It's not part of my solution. I'm too lazy for that. But I go back to the add new product. I pick this guy. And for the items that I have, I get all of them. I come back to this screen. I add a new data table here. And instead of picking anything from here, I go straight to the items and I add this guy here. So you see it shows you the name and create a DON. It doesn't really matter. I go to the properties again and I say edit fields and I see what is there. I don't need create a DON. And if I say add fields, you see all the fields that I have in the other table are actually present here. So it's literally a table. So choices returns me a list of 
all the items that they can be selected here and you have lots of fields here. So if this is a table and for example, for default, I want to say arts equipment, all I need to do, I need to come back here and I say filter, whatever that you have here for anything that this record dot name equals to arts equipment. And I close the bracket and that's it. And it shows uh, it doesn't. But why it doesn't show us anything? We have arts equipment. Spelling is correct. We can compare it here, arts equipment. It looks okay to me. So what are we missing here? I literally see the plain text of here if this filter is not there. Look at that. True. So let it show everything here. Arts equipment. Why this guy doesn't show it to us? Simple. Because when we are working with the lookup field, it doesn't really have a data type. So it doesn't do a true comparison of something like this with the string. To solve this problem, whatever you get here, you need to convert it to plain text, open the bracket. So whatever the name value is, we put it in the bracket and I just save it. And as you can see, now it shows you the art equipment. We got our filter. I just copy this guy and I bring it to my other screen. For the new product, YouTube category. I pick the combo box, just make sure it's unlocked. Now, we got the value from the items. We filtered it, whatever we have, we go to the default selected items. And instead of parent.default, I just take this guy out and I stick it here. How do you like this one? Now I can save this guy. I can go back to the first screen, run. And if I click on this guy, arts equipment is selected. Even if I change it to toys, for example, I enter something here, unit price, units in stock, and I just save it. And I go back here again, you will see arts equipment is selected default value. And now you get the point when I was talking to the experience developers. I said, whatever you have in the items, whatever the expression that is there, it doesn't really matter. Filter it and put it in the default selected items. And this is how you get default values for the combo box. That was all about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like button is right under this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.